What's up you guys, it's Two Bricks, and today I'm super proud to be able to bring you my rendition of Sisu Dragon from the Disney movie Raya and the Last Dragon, which you can check out in theaters now or on Disney Plus with Premier Access. Uh, this is a movie that uh, really, really means a lot to me, and a lot of you guys who um, follow me in uh, or on my Discord server and who talk to me behind the scenes, you guys know why this is super important to me. And when LEGO announced that they were producing sets based on this movie, I was really, really, really excited to get my hands on particularly Sisu Dragon. Um, she's just such a fun character and so animated and vibrant. And um, I started to see the, the photos and things of the official sets and it didn't exactly look like what I was hoping for. So um, I, you know, I was gonna wait and reserve judgment until I get the sets in my hands. And having built the actual official model of Sisu, uh, I still wasn't really happy. Um, particularly with the level of articulation and also the accuracy to certain features. Um, she has a really, really specific design. And for example, this um, molded headpiece that they have, um, you know, it gets the right idea across and has the opening jaw. It's very nicely produced with three different types of plastic in here, particularly with this translucent um, horn piece. Very nice looking. Um, but it just doesn't capture the look that I would want to see from CC Dragon. So I was kind of inspired by um, this. Uh, neat little set of, um, I forget this character's name from Frozen 2, the little um, fire gecko. And uh, he was so cute and so well done. I just thought like maybe I can have a stab at a more brick built approach to Sisu. So I took the basic kind of shape and I used some of the new elements that they introduced for that set. Like for example, these macaroni pieces, they're like one third or like one, I don't even know what dimensions these are. Um, but these little macaroni uh, wedges, and so I used the, the part that they introduced for that for the tail and this specialized new mold here. Um, but everything else is essentially uh, from scratch. Oh, and I did also take advantage of um, these new pieces here as well. Um, uh, these, these little arches are, um, I believe, recolors. I'm not sure I've ever seen those in that color before. And then these are for sure brand new molds here. They, they're kind of the inversion of these regular um, two by slope pieces, like the ones you see here on the nose and stuff. Uh, they kind of fit into that gap. So it's a really interesting new piece. So I went ahead and used a bunch of those and I took some out of the kind of temple build that comes alongside the Sisu uh, dragon set as well and um, came up with my own version of the dragon. So I'm just gonna go through really quick and give you guys a tour of the little features and articulations and poses you can get out of this and what my thought process was when I was making it. And uh, if you guys are interested, I have instructions that are for free available check out down in the description below. You can build your own. Uh, if you did happen to get the set and you, like me, wanted a little bit more out of the dragon, hopefully this will be the solution that you can use. Uh, but do keep in mind that this uh, is very much designed as a toy for much younger kids and it's all very kind of bulky and you, you, know, you can't break it. Um, whereas this is very much a brick built thing that's more fragile, and, uh, way more poseable and articulate, but um, yeah, will we'll break a lot more easily in the hands of easily frustrated young children, so do bear that in mind. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the different uh, areas here on Sisu and what can move and what can do what. So we'll start up at the front here. Um, this is the new head sculpt that I did, and it's obviously fully brick built. And I wanted to be able to maintain the ability to open and close the jaw. Um, but I just thought that like the, the shaping of Sisu's face, she has a much more triangular face and her jaw kind of comes out further like that. So I wanted to be able to, um, sorry, let me just straighten her nose. <laughs> my OCD. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, she has a much more triangular face and I really wanted to be able to capture that and I still wanted to maintain the horn and I kept some uh, translucent elements in there to just kind of keep the magic, the glowing elements of her uh, horn intact. Um, I give her these big sparkly eyes because Sisu is a very innocent and very happy and uh, hopeful character and very naive. So I think those big kind of um, watery eyes there just kind of scream that cuteness that you want to get out of um, her face. She has this nice mane of hair that comes down into her neck. The one on the official Lego set tried to kind of give that idea by having this curl around to the side, but um, it weren't really able to bring any of that down into the, the neck part. So I decided to do that there. Uh, it does have a ball joint for the neck, just uh, gives you a full kind of degree of motion there. You can kind of raise it up and down. And uh, the neck as well is on a ball joint, so you can really extend her neck out. You can rotate her neck all the way around so she can look at, you know, look behind her. 
Um, so I really like that. You know, the the problem with the ball joints is that um, depending on the piece you have, and over time the ball joints can get a little bit worn out with all of this weight on top. Um, so what I like to do is when I'm when I have this posed and it's just static on the desk, I like to put the neck uh, in this kind of more back position so that it's kind of supported by the body and then just let the chin naturally come to rest there. So, so there's not um, kind of tension on these ball joints when it's not being used. Uh, so throughout her body here, I used some accents of the teal color and uh, I thought teal kind of mirrored the, the mythical status of the dragons uh, in the movie because they it was once everywhere and then now <laughs> um, for a long period of time, teal was basically an extinct color and now it's back. So. Uh, I think that kind of is a cool nod to the, the movie, and also it's a nice color, so I think it really goes with Sisu and gives her that nice striping that she has down her body there, and nice kind of like detailing that she has all throughout her torso. I used the uh, bright, I believe this is the light bright spring green, I think is the name of this color, um, which they did sprinkle throughout on the official set as well. Um, I just kept those elements because she has like that, that nice bright underbelly, um, so I wanted to carry that through. She has a single degree of motion here on the middle of the spine with just, you know, the club and bar pieces and then a ball joint here for the back of the hips so she can get nice dynamic poses um, where she's, you know, leaning forward, looking forward and then her, you know, you kind of maintain the curve going down through her body there. So that's cool. Uh, her front legs and back legs both have the thigh and then um, forearm and foot or ankle and foot, um, you know, articulated here with a single degree of motion there and then ball joints for the hips so you can really splay the legs out and get a wide stance or a really narrow petite stance whatever you want to do the shoulders here have the same thing the ball joints for that I just changed around the orientation of how those were um, put in there so that you get the maximum amount of uh, swivel here in the neck and then also that the feet are a little bit um, they just sit at a, a good spot for her to you know place her feet on the ground basically. And uh, one thing I like about this is that it is stable enough that you can set it up um, like I had in the beginning with a three-legged pose where she can have her one foot kind of curious cocked up here and, and sort of looking. Um, and that's actually a, a pose that my, my dog does all the time and it really reminds me of, of, um, of that pose so that's something I like to do with my with my Sisu because um, cause I love my dog. Uh, here, let me just display this foot out. There you go. So yeah, three-legged pose is possible, which I really like. So then um, going down into the tail, like I said, I maintained the tail pieces because I thought they had a nice flow to them from the uh, official set. Uh, but then I redid this. Um, the official set used this kind of foil um, vinyl element with the gold on the back, which uh, I'm never a huge fan of these kinds of things that are supposed to represent like character stuff. They use these a lot to, to do things like boat sails or um, you know, like a fancy uh, awning or something that you see on, on the front of a building. And I think that's fine, but for an actual piece of a living character, the fact that it's fully two-dimensional uh, doesn't really do it for me. It's just my personal preference. Um, so I decided to build her an articulatable tail here. So she has the, the large fin and the small fin, and then those can um, those can go in and out because they're on these, um, they're on these fairly specialized rounded um, bar pieces here. So yeah, that gives you a little bit of extra flexibility there. And then the tail is fully on a ball joint and you can just, you know, go ahead and pose that however you like. So uh, it is obviously a lot heavier than the, uh, <laughs> the little tail vinyl piece there. So the tail does want to, if you have it like in a sideways position like this, over time it will want to make its way down to the ground. So that's just something that you can just either pose it straight up and it should stay, or you can pose it, you know, where it's down on the ground. Um, whatever it's up to you but um, but yeah I really like I really like the flow that you can get through this whole body that goes all the way down like you can really feel like the running on on the raindrops that you can see that's in the trailer it's not a spoiler but the dragons in this movie run on on rain and uh, I just really wanted to be able to capture that feeling in this model too or at least you know getting a little bit of a nice uh, flowing pose down through the through the body too to capture that. Also, she can uh, sit up, although her body is quite tall in the seated configuration, but um, let me just show you how that looks. So you can put her feet down, get her arms tucked in, and then she can uh, be listening and nodding along to whatever Raya is saying. And uh, that is something that is 
like I said, it's not really ideal, but it's something that you can do. And she's she's going to be like listening along and saying, uh huh, uh huh. So um, yeah, that's like, you know, it's okay. You you can do it. But I think the the body that was on the official set had zero flexibility at all, so you couldn't do like anything with it. So even though this isn't a perfect representation of Sisu sitting pose, at least you can do a sitting pose. So um, that's cool to me. You can maybe curl up these feet a little bit. And then, yeah, she has a nice wide base of support with those feet out. And uh, it looks kind of funny, but I, I actually kind of kind of dig it. So, so there's that. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. That's basically the articulation and the kind of look that I was going for on this dragon. Let me just reset her pose really quick. Do, do, do. I, I really like to keep her front paws tucked in. I think it just looks extra cute. And then her back feet wide. I don't know why that just appeals appeals to me. Um, and then there you go. There is your Sisu dragon. So um, yeah, I had a really, really fun time designing this and trying to capture really um, specific cartoony designs like this, especially with those eyes and the, and the face, um, is really, really difficult and a lot of fun. And um, oh, I forgot to mention, I use these quarter round wedges in here to give her kind of like <laughs> raised eyebrows. Like she's really, really sincere. Um, so yeah, this is, um, this is a really, really fun little project. And I really hope that if you guys did get the set and it didn't quite live up to your expectations, that this can be a solution for you. If you want to go ahead and, and you know, source the extra parts, uh, it's pretty easy to do. You can just upload the model directly to uh, Bricklink and it'll generate a parts list for you. Or you can use the parts list that I provided in my free uh, instruction. So uh, pretty easy. So if you guys have any uh, questions, concerns, comments, do let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of Raya and the Last Dragon if you saw it. Uh, you guys know I loved it. Uh, and yeah, and if you end up building one of these, I would love to see uh, what it looks like. I would love to see what scenes you guys are including it in. Uh, you can leave me a photo on, uh, tag me on Instagram, or you can join my Discord server where we talk all things Lego and uh, animation and all kinds of good stuff happening on there as well. So check the links down in the description for that. Uh, so that's going to do it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.